So basically, I'm short sighted. Yeah. Right? I'm short sighted. And that's why I'm always getting into trouble with my cars. Because it's always, <laughs> I'm short sighted and there's always bad potholes on the road in Nigeria. So I don't see potholes. Say no to Nigerian men. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Yup. Hey. Say no. Wait, wait, wait. What's going on with your Nigerian men this week? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with your Nigerian men this week? It's not week, a this but... week thing, yeah. But I'm just saying, say no to Nigerian men. What's been going on? I feel like Nigerian men run Nigeria, okay? Us women are supplementary, which is fine. Really? You feel the pain about that? No, I actually like that. I have no issue with that. Well, you're getting taken care of, so what's the problem? Okay. Anyways, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. You know, I'm all right. you know what? I, like, okay. So, in other episodes, right, we've we've talking a lot of good things about Nigeria. But so today, we need to just let the, let it out, man, because I'm, I'm down. this week, the last couple of months has been quite um, <sighs> challenging for mm. us, for both of us, right? Mm-hmm. We've had our various challenges. So I think this episode, I just wanted to just touch up on those things and. Not everything's always rosy. There's so many certain times that living in, we understand that we're in a third world country huh. and living in a third world country has its negatives. Mm. And it's important to just highlight that so that people don't assume that it's all hunky dory. There's other things going on. So, yeah, I mean, for me, this week has just been uh, sometimes good, like good highs, but like, bad lows and you're thinking like what is going on and then but it end up balances out itself out anyway <laughs> right so my big our biggest lows this week was i lost two of my babes <laughs> <laughs> okay talk to me what happened say no to nigerian women so so it's just like you know when you just you just realize like so in Nigeria, because everybody just wants stuff from you, like always nagging. Trust me. It, it's just, it's hard to, to have a conversation with people. You understand? It's hard to kind of connect really. Yeah. So I just decided that, you know what? Some people just kept on calling me. I just blocked. I just yeah, blocked you you, you, were, you attract, um, you know, you, you attract. <laughs> don't tell me. Don't, let me talk, talk about what you They look at you like an ATM. <laughs> Are oh, we gonna do this today? Let's lay it all out Let's today. Lay it Let's all lay it out. out today. So, like, yeah, I've noticed, you know, a couple of babes, you know, you attract yeah, people yeah, that yeah. look so, at you as look, an ATM. Look, it, it, I mean, it's it's kind of um, it's expected, right? Mm-hmm. But it's not appreciated. Yeah, I like that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's really that's really the key thing. Um, but look, we're still filtering through the through the sand mm-hmm. right to find the gold mm-hmm. so hopefully one day we find the gold like Nigerian women yeah they've got they've got so many strengths you know mm. very entrepreneurial mm. you know um they're quite exposed but unfortunately I just them them man they just men they just see men as an ATM mm. so That's fact. that transactional nature is hard to connect to people even as a female I've had, I've struggled with female friends because they treat they I have the same thing they treat mm. me like an ATM I don't, mm. I, don't, I don't understand that mentality so yeah, no, obviously dating in Nigeria is, I don't know. This year I've been disengaged. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm slowly being open to being engaged. But mm. regardless, it's a just, mind, it's a minefield out here. Yeah, it's a minefield. You're yeah. just going to be just be stepping on yeah. mines up and down. down. So you just got to be very careful. But mm. that's not even been the bane of my year. Okay. Mm. You lost the babes. I have been moving into my place. Hey. I know this. You're what the... my eyes have seen, yeah, mm. nah. So, so the whole move situation, huh. like, okay, first of all, yeah, I want the audience to let us know if, if this is Salewa being too bougie, or okay. <laughs> you know, she's actually okay. having a nightmare. Okay, yes, exactly. <laughs> so, okay. so tell us about what's going on. So obviously, 
you know, I have standards. Everybody knows that. <laughs> it's not my fault. The standards are not because I want more than what I can have. The standards are because it's what my body can literally yeah. accept. So I got somewhere that was nice, cosmetically gorgeous. Every single person that's entered said it's nice, mm. has some features that I liked, a lot of space. However, the foundation of a house is the most important thing. Mm. And it's until you either A, have experience building, constructing real estate that you'll see it immediately, yeah. or two, you start to live there. So there's some things I've learned, for example, it's a brand new house. I'm the first person to live in that. That actually is not something smart to do in Nigeria. Yep, yeah, that's... Because That's not you are one. picking up the cost of every little small thing, plumbing thing that goes wrong, mm -hmm. painting thing that goes wrong. Like, so that's number one. Then number two, uh, for I thought for security reasons, let me pick a big estate. Some people were saying, pick a big estate, pick a big estate, makes the service charge lower, no way, yeah. makes, you know, the safer and all that. Huh? Security let random men come to my door. They, they the the energy, the way they're managing the power is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Pam Africa. So that's coming to my Africa. house very soon. <laughs> um the way they the water is like number one, yeah. I'm gonna send add the video mm. to this gram group chat. Yeah. <laughs> what one of the what kind of the water that came out of somebody's tap looked like I don't know. Like you're going it was the your sea. skin literally the skin tone. And then like <laughs> <it> was, <laughs> <laughs> no, let's get a literally look like chocolate. Yeah. Then on top of that, and I now paid for I paid for water filtering system. Mm -hmm. So what I paid, it cost me like a hundred k. Because I was like, help me not see clean clean. Are you actually That's mad? Crazy, I won't yeah. leave my house. Like if I if I don't shower with clean water, I'm not going to leave my yeah, house. Yeah, you can't, like, you can't get out of there. Yeah, so yeah. immediately before even moving in, paid for water filters. I also attached pictures. Put it at the front. Put it at the back. Cost me a hundred k. But if they don't, if the tank, if the water from the tank is still not clean, mm. that's an issue. It's a big issue, yeah. Another problem is obviously I love water, water baby, whatever. So let me go have a house on the ocean. I can see mm. the ocean from the balcony. That alone brings a whole host of issues. When you live closer to the ocean, you're less likely to have clean water. Mm. Way more insects that you can imagine. Rusting Facts. is a very big issue. Your electronics spoil, your your kitchen sink, things start rusting. Mm -hmm. It's been a lot, B. I, I, you know what? And 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 actually, I can relate to that now because I'm in a very similar position. Yeah. I can see some rust going on. I can see, like, even in the nighttime, I can't even open the windows because of mosquitoes coming in. And I even, I even to the point where I've literally started buying those mosquitoes. Oh, I've got the natural mosquito fleet. I didn't tell you. The one that, the lemongrass one. Yeah, the lemongrass, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got mm -hmm, that one now. Mm -hmm. So I just spread out my body just to make sure, like, yep. I don't get bitten. Mm -hmm. But it's all these little things that you never thought about you had to do. That you, like, being in Nigeria, you have to be your own government. Yes, I said I run my own economy. I you run my your house. own economy, yeah. So economy, it's like, yeah. why do you have to worry about like water filters, significant water filters, and all I'm these different you. things? Power. I'm telling you, I had to buy fire alarms this week. I'll tell you why. So I was at my friend's house mm. and there was low current. Now somebody that was, she started panicking, like, "Oh my god, low current! Turn everything off." I'm like, "What's going on?" She's mm. like, "That's how she was at her friend's house. There was low current. They smelled burning. AC was on fire." And that was the third person in the week to tell me that their ACs had caught fire. That's absolutely And I'm like, crazy. hold on a second. In my house, and I know some people's houses, mm. the windows have security bars. Mm. So if you have a security bars, obviously it cannot allow people to... Go outside. But you, God forbid, you're trapped inside the house. Mm. That means you can't come out the window if in case of a fire. So I had to literally buy ASAP, these smart fire alarms. So... They can notify mm. me in when it because also when you live in the estate, God forbid the fire could come from next door. It doesn't yeah, even yeah, need to be your own, own apartment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've done that. Then I've started buying. I don't. There's one thing I'm not even going to talk about today because it's too traumatizing. <laughs> yeah, that one I'll just you guys later. I had to go and buy humidity, humidity and temperature checks because humidity really affects your house. Mm. Yeah. Are you talking about the M situation? Yes, <laughs> humidity <laughs> is a motherfucker. <laughs> Go ahead. So I'm just saying, you know, just just make sure that you check the temperature and the humidity inside your house. I've yeah, bought yeah, lots yeah. of plants now. I'm um, even the same thing. I'm gonna buy Does plants absorb humidity. Yeah, so so there's some plants that are fantastic for that. So mother-in-law's tongue, Chinese evergreen. Mm. There's some flowers. I can't pronounce it, Chris and that. I can't pronounce it. Then also they there's some that work as insect repellent. So I'm about to plant lemongrass, lavender, basil, mm. um, around the perimeter of the house, inside the kitchen to help repel 
insects. Uh, so, so plants is huge. Uh, it cleans the air. I'm also, because otherwise I have to buy an air purifier. But what I'm learning is I want to make this house such that when I'm traveling, I can come back and not see the whole house has crumbled down. Mm -hmm. So some of the solutions I'm looking for, I don't want electronic solutions because there's no way you're going to travel yeah. for two weeks a mm -hmm. month and you're going to be running your air purifier mm -hmm. or you're going to be stuff. running your AC. Yeah. So I'm trying to find natural God-given solutions mm -hmm. that can help me solve all the issues that I've been facing mm. um, with the with the property, but this this country that's I'm not even done with my rant by the way. So uh, so how are you kind of I mean when do you when do you feel like okay you would have got to a point that I need to just sort this 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 and this out before you feel okay this is time to move in. So I think if I was to advise people now and mm. all, the, all of this stuff very soon, I'm going to put it into one document because mm. it, it is a lot. It is really a lot of stuff to look out for. Mm. And we don't know. The most important thing I think is to be able to keep your house cool because mm. if your house gets too hot, you have problems. That's where the humidity comes in. Hum yes. Humidity mm. is about moisture in the air, but also the temperature of the house itself. So, mm. AC, air conditionings, inverter ACs, because depending on how you're paying for your power, and this mm. is where you come in, some some girl on Instagram yesterday was crying about how she spent 230K on light. Then that was there was a long debate, get prepaid meter, get this. Regardless, if you get a prepaid meter and you have electronics that, mostly ACs that mm -hmm. drain your light, mm -hmm. you'll just be drinking up your- Drinking up your- Yeah. yeah, yeah so uh, inverter ACs, inverter electronics are important um, because again, if you're someone that they take light, bring light back, low current, you need to have goods that don't mm. spoil. Uh, so I think ACs are very important. That's really mm. important. And then the advice that everyone's giving me is furnish as you go. So I'm just slowly mm. like, they say furnish your bedroom. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and I love interior design. I've got some really nice fur rugs. Mm. So I'm every, my, the theme of my house is like white and gold. Hmm. So I'm only allowing white and gold things inside the property. You're going to be looking like one diva. <laughs> <laughs> it was Diva's house, like so, my Carey. <laughs> yeah, so I'm really, I'm working on that. It's it's really fun. It's really exciting because it's like the way you would do up your house in London. It's not mm. the way you do up your house in Nigeria. I think there's there's many different factors to living yeah, here. I don't know so if you've experienced that. It's, so so like when it comes to electricity and all these things, it's standard. You just know, okay, either you, you're on a monthly payment or you got a, a, a prepaid meter, or whatever it is, and then you just pay and you always get electricity. So you don't have to worry about going off and and this that inverter this and all that kind of stuff right um then obviously the water side of things is also the same thing it's just like you just pay your thames water or whatever it is and you, and you get your water supply coming in and then buy your bottled water for your drinking and stuff like that but so when it comes to the infrastructure side of things it's a bit more standard like it and there's a process that you can get it all sorted out for to good quality but maybe yeah, maybe like when it comes to household appliances as well, there are kind of outlets that like you can go and buy stuff, right? There's like curries and all this other stuff. There's mm -hmm. like all all the different um, department stores that you can go to and get your, your household appliance. Mm -hmm. But I don't feel that there's one place in Nigeria where all of that is 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 in is in there. So like, like for example, I wouldn't want to buy furniture from Blenko. God forbid. <laughs> 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 or or a ban on supermarket. No. So so I'm a conga babe. Everyone laughs at me. I okay. literally use conga. So my Amazon here. Do you Amazon work? Does it work very well? It works very well. And and also, so they literally within two days I get everything that I need. The only mm. thing is though, they've started, I've seen some red flags. For example, I ordered these pots and pans here. Mm. Can you imagine the handle for the frying pan was not included in the box? I'm going to still go and fight them because I have not me I haven't got time for that. What do they want you to do? Pick the pan with your hand? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. So I, it, it is everything you want. You get it cheaper than in the supermarket because I've noticed in Nigeria there's a premium on things you buy in the supermarket. Yeah, uh, as well. Yeah, so you gotta be careful. Uh, and then Polystar for electronics. Polystar seemed to mm. be one place you could look. I got my tabletop mm. gas cooker from there. But even like you say, I never knew what a gas cylinder was. I think it was like it was oh, our, yeah, one true. of our old our guests, common, Godfrey. Yeah. He sat me down and told me everything I need to buy. Curtains. Curtains are so expensive. Yeah. I've literally... Oh my God, curtains are expensive. I just so realized... So expensive. Like, I think, I think there's one time the lady came to me and she called us some ridiculous number. I just said, no, don't worry. <laughs> just do this. <laughs> <laughs> do this one. <laughs> 
It's later on. They can, they can see me from the other side. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. That's literally. But my bedroom, where I'm sleeping, just put, just put the literally, curtain. Literally, that's what I've done now. Yeah, I've done curtains in my bedroom because the bill, my curtains, has come to a total of four hundred k, and crazy. that does not include the other windows that need blinds because yeah. I'm doing curtains in three places and the rest need. But so it's not cheap, like yeah. at all. Then what are other staples you need? Even your bed. Mm. Then if you want to get a TV console, like you know, it's not it's not cheap it's at not all. Cheap. Yeah. I mean, that's where that's where kind of that IMB concerns comes in. Is like you've gone through this process, you know, kind of how to get let's say your gas cylinder, all these things, and and people will come in and they might want to kind of do the same thing. They want to move and they don't know where to get these things or trust people to do that. So. They can definitely reach on that IMB concierge to, yeah, you to guys get that there. And trusted artisans. Because one of artisans, the girls in yeah. the group, she got scammed for furniture. They ran off with the piece. <laughs> so when she sent the piece and the furniture there, right? And they blocked her on Instagram after. It's wickedness. So yeah, you, we have to... That's why... That's why... Like us going through this. So, somebody told me that in Nigeria, somebody will scam you. You see, see them later and they will laugh about it. I'll run you over. I'll run you over. Mike. Smile care. Huh. That's why you have more poor thoughts. Come and clear them from the place. Hey guys, we've got some good news for you today. Fantastic news. Yes. I can't wait. We've been hearing everything you've been saying mm-hmm. and we've settled down over here and now we are proud to announce the IMB Concierge Service. Whoop! Yeah. So our concierge service really would help you guys to support you with any problem you have in Nigeria. If you want to start up a business, you need some research done, IMB is here to help you. If you want your properties to be checked up on, we can also support you with that. Just anything you need. What are the things that the IMB concierge service can do? Personal shopping. Woo! You know, if you've got real estate investments, you need someone to check. Have you got a shop here that you're managing from abroad? We can go and check it out for you. Do you want us to buy you a gift? There's so many things that we can do because we know it's so hard to find people to trust from abroad. That's true. And you can reach the IMB service on yes. our WhatsApp number, yes. which is plus 234-904-549. 9846. But here's another thing I want to talk about artisans. I don't mm. know if you experienced this. Again, as a single female, I realize mm. how you have to be very careful mm. managing all these different artisans coming in your house, house carpenter yeah. here, plumber here. They're all trying to hustle you mm-hmm. and they size you up thinking that you have X amount of money. So when you give them money, it's like, uh uh-uh. uh. Is this all that you're all giving? That you and I know I give more than other people. And when I speak to local people, they're like, how could you give them that? Mm. Why would you give 10K, 15K, dash that out? Mm. You're only meant to give 2,500, yeah, yeah, 5K. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know how you've had that as well. So yeah, I mean, with, with, with that, um, I priced them down. But I, I okay, so, so there's two ways you can do it, right? If they did a good work, I would just give them some decent money. But if it did, did a shit work, I always feel like everybody does a shit work anyway, so I'll just <laughs> I'll just give you something trash, and if he tries to f- tries to say anything, I'll become very aggressive, <laughs> right? And then that's kind of a way to kind of get it out. But mm. sometimes, I mean, there's just days where you, you 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 kind of have people that you trust, so you don't have to negotiate with the artists. And so, let's say, for example, you have one person that's responsible for your kind of house maintenance. Mm-hmm. And then you just give that person the money and then they do the rest of the stuff. So like me, when I first moved in, I had someone who posed to be an interior designer. <sighs> she was okay. She was all right. Uh, but she brought in a fantastic carpenter. Okay. So he did a very good job with kind of getting all the mm-hmm. furnitures in and, and stuff like that, right? Um, and and as, and then from there, I said, okay, I need someone to do this and do that. And do this. So she just sourced all the other artists together because she does that in other places as well. So... Mm-hmm. Anytime I need an artisan, I just call and say, listen, this is what's working. This is what's going on. And she gives and then you And she sorts that out, yeah. So that just so saves me from negotiating with the artisan directly and dealing with that stuff. Mm. But it's obviously more expensive because someone's in the middle, right? Mm. One person, she told me the way she deals with them is that she tells them, like, I'll send you money in two weeks if the stuff works. Because a lot of the time mm. they do things and, and it actually work. does it breaks down yeah. in two weeks. I did that with my driver. And, oh, sorry, my mechanics now. Yeah, yeah. Because they, they, I've gone for hell. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that because you've actually. Done. I've gone for. Okay, so basically, right? Since ever I started driving, I've always, <laughs> I've always driven a BMW, right? 
<laughs> and I didn't know that BMW in Nigeria is like it's like it doesn't even it's not go common. Together. It's like yeah. oil and water. It doesn't get it doesn't get along, <laughs> right? Because obviously BMW is more technical. There's a lot more faults and X Y Z. So I met this guy uh, in my old place, and then he, we were working together. He was kind of supporting me with all my cars maintenance, all that kind of stuff. So just doing basic maintenance, oil change, all the basics, easy stuff, until. Until I moved, and then obviously my car had, had started having more serious issues because the road to get to my house was not good. Huh. So then he started coming in and fixing. But literally, I guarantee this guy calls me every day because he knows something's going to go wrong. Every day. Wait. Every day. Every single day. I would have blocked me. him by now. It's a nuisance. So, a nuisance. so, so literally, I, I knew, I'm, I'm a kind of person where I feel, I feel like. The person, who, the people who you speak to every day, you're literally them, right? So if I'm speaking to my mechanic every day, I'm, I might as well just be, <laughs> I might as well just God be a <laughs> but God, Exactly. So that's what pisses me off because I was like, okay, there's something wrong going on here. So, um, so yeah, I think across both cars, they're always, one of them is always been at fault at one period of time and has to be solved, right? Mm. So the, the there's two two key things is um the reason why my cars are faulty. One is the road and second is my mechanic. So it's either they're doing something tricky somewhere or or maybe when I'm driving I'm to be more cautious on the road, right? And also the car as well. So oh. so I've I've spent a lot on on those on servicing cars. Huh. Um so my advice would be if you're coming to Nigeria, uh the, the more reliable brands out there for the first couple until you kind of get an understanding of okay you've got a, a good um service center let's say like a professional service center yeah, that yeah. can do your cars mm -hmm. just stick to like uh, uh, lexus and toyota, toyota yeah, yeah. The, the in, so lexus and toyota historically have kind of the best service history mm. especially lexus yeah um and then yeah they're more accessible here so you're more likely to find parts exactly, better yeah. parts more likely to find yeah. better experience or, or nord because it's made here yeah so you, nord can, is you, 100%. you can just drive to to, to toby's that's my house goal. and said yeah and say, i need i need it i need, this I need to a nord yeah. that's definitely uh so for me going forward i think i think those two brands is what i'm going to stick with yeah um just just for more from a reliability perspective i think reliability is more important than anything anything for me right now but let's share some stories with the people go ahead I don't know if you're gonna like that. I'm, I'm gonna bring this up. Oh I feel like God. we should share some stories oh. with the people about this karting. Okay, one in particular. Let me start with what happened to somebody else. So somebody else, yeah, like because of the flooding mm. was so bad, and this is actually within my estate. Oh wow! Their their car spoiled. The steering is spoiled. <laughs> well, you just stopped working. It just stopped working. The steering just <laughs> messed up. So one thing that we know, yeah, about driving here. Oh my is god! The I don't know. Sorry, you're gonna. You know, it's, it's the rain. <laughs> yeah, facts. And the thing about Lagos that like, this episode is so important is Lagos can bring you all the way to up. your knees. Before you know it, you're just down there. <laughs> yes, your knees. Like you can literally be. Yeah. You know, one minute you're riding in an S class. <laughs> next <laughs> minute you're on, you're on a kata. <laughs> You're the, you're I'm going to tell you a story. So okay. last week, I know I told you about it, but I'm going to tell you. So last week, no, no, actually Friday, this Friday just, mm -hmm. that just went past. I was, I had a very, very big meeting. <laughs> very big meeting. Like literally, I was about to go and close the door, get excited. I was like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Got my best, best outfit for the day. <gasps> Perfume, litty. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> everything, everything Chris. Everything Chris. <laughs> So jumped out of the car, just jumped jumped into the car, clean cars clean in the morning, got here driving, <laughs> got out of my house, got to the roundabout, the car just went J -j 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 -j. <laughs> <laughs> literally everything just stopped. The light on the dash went off. It <laughs> <laughs> literally the light on the dash everything was done nah. so I literally just sit, and, and literally I was late already and I was thinking okay if I'm here now nah, I'm going to be late right because before I was early but now I'm late because mm -hmm. the car stopped so and then one thing about me is that I'm always having a solution even if yep, there's a problem same. I'm always feeling a solution 100%. immediately so my brain is like mm -hmm. quickly thinking right so quick thinking I was like okay cool what's going on right now I realised okay the, the car's not on in so obviously the battery because the lights are all gone right so, meanwhile, it was a very small issue. The battery connector came off. 
Oh. Right? But <laughs> me, I, I just, I just, I just said, listen, how much is this car? X, Y, okay, how much is this do I'm going to find? Okay, listen, the car can stay here. Ah. I called, I called, I looked at him, the, the gate man was around. So yeah. I just called the gate man, I said, listen, stand here uh, by the car, wait for my mechanic to come. I just called the car, I said, can I come, come, come. <laughs> then I jumped to the bike, I literally jumped to the car bike, right? And then, I, I, and I started going on my journey. So then, they obviously, there's water on the road, right? Oh. <laughs> and I was, you know me, I'm always dripped out. <laughs> and 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 and, and literally, I was just, I was just, I just saw the kind of, I said, "If this water touch me, <laughs> this water, I'm gonna cut his neck off." <laughs> you know, on the back of the kind of, he just sliced the guy's neck. I was, like, I'm gonna finish you. Like, just, just make sure you drive slow until you get to the junction where I can get Uber. <sighs> so. Um, <laughs> L- lucky for me, lucky for, uh, literally, like I was so late, I couldn't even wait to even call an Uber because by that Uber would come to my road. Fam. I would have already been at a junction getting a quick, uh-huh. a quick uh, Uber. So I obviously got to junction, got an Uber, and then um, what did I even do? Yeah, I just went straight to the, to the venue to come to the meeting. Lagos has put big men on Mercados, you know. <clears throat> I've heard stories of men coming out of their cars, they're driving while in traffic because they're late, they jump into the car. Not a good thing. <laughs> and imagine pulling up to a big meeting on a bike. <laughs> No, 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 no. That this this country is 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 a shambles. It's like, like so you you need to be you need to be willing to put your ego aside and 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 just yeah, which is I struggle with that. Right? Yeah, you struggle with that boy, but yeah, you need to you need to put your ego aside and get on with things because this place is not going to be forgiving to you at all. At all, like okay, if you're there, you're there. You and just like okay, I'm in this situation right now. How can I get out of this situation? Okay, yeah. Excited. Like even ah, oh, did I even tell you when the, the, the day another car station, the, the 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 big car, not the small one, the big one. <laughs> <laughs> this one, this was Lekke no, This one was way. the big. This one was crazy. <laughs> so I, I I was coming back from your place, yes, right? You yeah, are, yeah, yeah. Yes. And then and then obviously I was on the way. Got uh, what happened? What happened? Oh yeah, pot pothole again. It was it was so basically I'm short sighted. Yeah. Right. I'm short sighted, and that's why I'm always getting into trouble with my cars because it's always. <laughs> I'm short side and there's always bad potholes on the road in Nigeria. So I don't see potholes, right? So literally, this was not even the raining one, you know. This was the one that happened like <laughs> when I called. <laughs> off, I called him, okay. <laughs> so I literally, I was driving, I was I, I, and looking quickly. Just all I, all I just heard is boom, boom, <laughs> <laughs> and then the car was like scratch, scratch, scratch. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're 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 done today. Night time, eleven PM. We're just gonna be here. So I dropped out. <laughs> I you know what you know what you stop your car in, in Lagos so when. when <laughs> <laughs> you know you stop your car in Lagos, yeah, and you just park up all the the touts from everywhere. We like, yep. They're like ants. Like, They're come like out. ants. They just come out from out of woodworks. Like, yep. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Oh, you need it, oh, guy. What you need? Yeah, yeah. So all the touts came around. <laughs> It was a whole meeting. We shared bread. I was thinking. <laughs> they all came around. It was like, okay. Let's, one was I taking the tires out, trying to fix it. Fix the tire now. But the way it hit the pothole, I think something else loose in the car. Oh, my God. So I, I, I just I just started calling every number on my phone. <laughs> I called one day. I called another guy. I was, I was like, guys, this is like, right now I'm in this situation. <laughs> And you know the funniest thing? Oh, let me even tell you what even made it funny. No. So me, when, when I'm in a situation like that, I'm tense, right? I get aggressive. Yes. And then this, there was this guy that fixed the tire. He was coming to me, asked me, okay, what's happening? Are we moving? It was, so it was just a bit, it was getting a bit too raz. Mm. So as soon as it came to me, I I, um, I was always, always very tense, right? Mm-hmm. So as it was coming to me, I just slapped him. <laughs> Like, like, this is not even like I was like, uh, like it's on un- unconscious slap. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. just like boom. Oh, come on. <laughs> I was like, oh fuck, I slapped this guy now. Like, am I gonna get into a situation? Because like then I, I just didn't have the energy to no, fight that's that cra- day. That's crazy. Literally, like I just and then the guy I was like, oh, you slapped me. Is it because I'm? A, and I was like, oh, guys, actually, by mistake, I didn't mean to say <laughs> like, but I, I, I couldn't say that. But I was just like, in my head, I was like. No, I it's a didn't lot. Mean to slap you. I was like, it's a lot. It's very tense right now. No, but this is a like, lot. <laughs> this, is, no, this is a lot. And then, and then, then, then he got so angry. I'm gonna call his the, the king of the touts. Oh, <laughs> area master. The area master. Come and he was like, oh, let's calm the situation down. And the one one drunk idiot was there in the corner. You know, Nigeria, they don't really fight. They like shout. They don't shout. They so don't the, fight. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the guy was just over there shouting. Oh, yeah. why did you slap my brother? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and it was long story short, it was just like a whole scene. I was like, that's funny. I hate this man. Lagos will always put you in this scene. And, and then I was just thinking, like, I just like <sighs> calling. I look. I called. I called a couple of my friends, and then somebody came down, and then and then they spoke that Euro about give some people money and uh, X Y X Y, and then and Lagos will just put you some mad situations. I was like, I was like, okay. That one is not even the car for. There was just like a pothole in the road. It's like, so now this pothole has made me slap somebody that literally like, <laughs> that now I mean, end up like getting the car towed and all this. It's like, it's like, this is the ghetto. No, it's, no, this is the ghetto. But the one, the worst one, you have to say the other one because that's the one that I knew. I didn't even know about this one. This one's uh, crazy. The, the no, bus no, one. The have to, you have to say that one. That one's the one. Yes. All right, all right, all right. Oh, oh my Patrick God. and his car stories, man. There's so many. I was like, shit. All right, this is a small car right yeah. now. So, this, so obviously, after the studio, you live at my house. After filming, we went to, went to Ed's house and chill. And then, um, yeah, we went to Ed's house and chill. Mm. So, I was, obviously, after I late at 11 on the way back home, huh. just cruising. And same shit again, <sighs> hot talk. Probably with a similar location. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> right? So, and, and literally was like it was so late um, lucky for me the car was still moving so it wasn't it, it wasn't mm-hmm. electrical for the car could move but the tyre was flat the tire was, yeah. so I just drove into like a service road <laughs> and then I just parked and it was just it was just dark at night time and me once once I'm in a situation like that there's two things I like get very stressed very relaxed mm-hmm. but in that situation I was very relaxed I don't mm-hmm. know why I just thought you know what it's fine things mm-hmm. happen let's just kind of figure it out <laughs> so i just called my friend and i was just talking on the phone i was just just saying, I, was, I was calling you first yeah but you were you were busy i was occupied <laughs> <laughs> but anyways so I, I was just calling my friend i was just chatting i was just mm-hmm. like yeah just talking about i didn't even tell, tell the person that administration i was just yeah chatting just to calm myself down mm-hmm. right so after i calmed down, it's okay now i need to figure out how to get out of the situation yeah so um i Drove the car to to a location. Some guys were there. I was like, okay, can I just park the car here? Yeah. So this is another thing. So if you have a solution like that, there's actually safe. First of all, you find a safe place to park your car. Yeah. Right. So there was a guy uh, that had a gate, and he was security to one of the um, shopping complex. Okay. So he, I just gave him a second. I'll give you one k. Just make sure I park my car here. So that tomorrow morning, yes, my mechanic can come and pick it up. Nice. Right? Because I, I and and another thing is like stupid me. I didn't have a change of tire in the car. So you should always have a spare tire in the mm. car. I to that, Listen to I that, that, guys. Yeah. But there was there was no spare tire in the car. So mm. there was literally no other tire to change that thing. So it was late at night. So all the guys that were fixing out tires at that time I was gone home. Right? Another thing about driving late. Hmm. So long story short, um, what happened? Yeah, long story short, I had to I had to go and my my phone was there, so I couldn't order an Uber. Hmm. So I said, how am I getting home at 12 o'clock midnight? And I can't order my Uber. My car's broke down in somewhere in Lagos. And I have to say, man, you know those, you know those lucky shuttle, those small bu- white buses? <laughs> Dafo buses? <laughs> no, it's not even, Dafo is good. I think Dafo has space. <laughs> <laughs> There's this lucky shuttle, these small buses what, that they brought white? from China. And oh it's all smashed God. in and everything. Rusty, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the only thing moving towards going to my office. <laughs> <laughs> lucky for me, lucky for me, my other car was in the office. Yes. Right? So all I had to do was go f- on go on two bus stops mm-hmm. on the Lake Express Expressway. But obviously, Okadas are not moving at that time. No. Because they're banned Okadas in Nigeria, yeah. right? So it's only those Lake Kishoto buses. So I was like, damn, I'm really going to have to get into this thing. crazy. <laughs> in this thing today. So I literally, I stopped by and then the, I, was, I called one of the buses down and the guy came. And then they have to open the, the, the chair. I'm telling you, these buses look like your worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like your worst nightmare. I would just walk on the street. Me, I would have. T- <laughs> you just walk. I would have. I would have passed out if I saw the bus in Sunday. <laughs> it is like your worst nightmare. Literally, like there was no light. Everybody there what? would look so miserable. What the buses were dark. And people were sweat. Oh my god. What it, it was literally your worst nightmare. And I, hey. that's when I realized, like, nah. But Nigerians are really trying. They're trying. Like, people man. are going through some really difficult a, times. A lot. Um, a lot. And and you have to go through those humbling experiences to just appreciate kind 100%. of your life and just understand. Okay, look, 100%. this can happen to anybody. Hundred percent. So yeah. Anyways, got to the second bus stop and I went to the, walked to the office and then to, to the other car and went home. That's Lucky, I'm so happy that my office was close close to that place. If not, that would have been a situation. <laughs> I would have to take take. <laughs> 
think one of the buses all, all the way, way home. <laughs> God forbid. That would, God have forbid. Been, that would have been so bad. No, I remember you said that you told the driver, I'll give you extra money. Don't let anybody yeah, yeah, sit next yeah, yeah, to me. Yeah. yeah, so I went to the front seat and I told him, I'll give you extra money. I don't want anybody to sit next to me because like the bus is so small. I was like, how do you hope do I crap myself from another person next nah. to me? I, literally, that day I felt so bad. When I was like, on the expressway. I called you and I sent you a video saying, you Look at me, I'm on the expressway. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> like, uh, I can relate because it's happened to me as well. Like, let's also say about Lagos. You just have to be prepared. Like, mm. you can just be on a high and the country will just bring you bring all up. the way yeah. back down low. And it's what you said. When it happens, you just have to take a step back and just see life through everybody's perspective mm. at that low. At that time, yeah. And yeah. just thank God for life when you get back to it. Mm. It's crazy. It is crazy. And, and I'm not going to if I was a girl, like, like I would be scared. I, I'm I'm used to like being in very difficult situations, mm-hmm, right? So that's mm-hmm. why I can actually move to live in Nigeria. Yeah, but a lot of people are not used to that. So it's like, imagine <sighs> if you're in that situation, you'd be freaking out. Da, 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 I had da. a man lock himself inside my house. What? He locked himself inside my house. We had to call police. We had to call all these people, security, to get this person. I'm just trying to watch my words outside of my house. For a dispute of 14,000 naira. This guy scammed me out of 50k, yeah, and then was forced to come back to repair what he, he did. He, he, put, he fixed dodgy ACs, yeah, and he'd already scammed me out of 50k. Who spends 50,000 naira to even put up two ACs? Wait, wait, wait. He this locked do- himself inside, inside my house. house. We, trust we had to rush back to the house it was a big spectacle i'm like why is it in this lagos here that you can just be living princess lifestyle and madness and will still will just come find to you. you and madness will still come to you nah, you I need to it get was... your pepper spray in the house no bro. no it's no, no. i didn't even want to spray. stay there literally have to holy water the whole place again <laughs> the whole place again different madnesses whether inside or outside the home there's just different crazy situations you can find yourself mm. in so you just have to pray to god you have for, to pray to god to all good times. friends for protection for good people to work with like you say when i meet good people for example now my plumber the water treatment guy i mm. love him anybody okay. that needs water treatment mm. i've got him you know, I've got him because his spirit is good. He works hard. My plant guy, love him. There's some there's sometimes you meet them. When you meet them, you want the best for them. Mm. And you know, because they look at you like a human being. Human being, yeah. Whereas yeah, sometimes sure. as, as a woman. Have, as money yeah. or just like Especially take advantage. Yeah, yeah, take advantage of you. So single ladies, I can't believe it's coming from me. Even though I preach so to Nigerian <laughs> men every week, I will let you know. Is I've had a big reality check mm-hmm. doing this thing by myself. Getting yeah. a place by yourself, furnishing it from scratch by yourself. I cannot under estimate how much money mm. you spend, you spend in, yeah. in a short space of time and 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 people always trying to rip you off so always yeah. so safety wise just just consider you know just you know, there's, there's one two nice nigerian guys out there mm-hmm. you know just just consider having support you know mm. in the journey because how many uh, how many support systems do you have now in terms of like man honestly i like i have you um i have you you've you've been great and I have one other person that's really come, been there for me mm. during this period. Uh, but yeah, I think the issue, this is where it comes down to my personality. I only have male friends. Mm. I literally have like one female friend. So Yeah, but like, I mean, situ- in difficult situations, female friends are, 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 are very hard to depend on. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, it's, yeah, so it's, it has helped me that I only have male friends, but I also... Regardless, I've just learned the biggest lesson that God has taught me in this thing I've been through is that you can't do life alone. Mm. If I didn't have you, you a, guys in this last six around, months, yeah. it would have been, if I, I would have probably just, I don't even know what I would have done. You just said, I'm going back to just, London. I would have just <laughs> gone into the ocean and said, God take me now. <laughs> that ocean I keep going to, I just, I would have just lied down into the ocean because I'm like, no, who sent me? It's not even funny. Why would you say that? No, like, but it's, funny. True, no, but it's <laughs> true though. It was a lot to deal with. Yeah, I feel you. My furniture, I had to go out of state to go and get my furniture by myself. Mm. My, I got hijacks, the truck, area boys came to hijack my truck and I'm there by myself. Mm. Like, so one, one thing <sighs> my, 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 uh, my friend, um, one of my friends, he always talks about it was like embrace difficulty right so when things are difficult go through it like embrace okay look, things are difficult accept it mm-hmm. things are difficult right now right and what what do, what can i do to move the needle forward just a little bit every time until i get past the difficulty i know it's hard to say even in nigeria right 
but it's so important because like in Nigeria, you you would you would have to learn how to embrace difficulty. Because there's there's, there's always gonna be something that will throw you off. And if you and something that you're not prepared for, always. At all, yeah. Right? So you need to embrace difficulty and just kind of just face it. Mm. Face it head on. Face it head on. Mm. Um like even right now, like w- we're probably going for a very difficult time. It's crazy. But we're just embracing difficulty yeah, right now. It. Just literally getting on with it. Mm. Like, I've, it's crazy. Like, again, I, I don't, there's one situation I just don't want to speak about <laughs> because it's, it's that dramatizing. But imagine just losing basically everything that you have mm. and you're still BAU, still working as usual, still grinding as usual. And that's the thing about Lagos. I call it like a military camp mm. because it makes you very, very, very strong. Resilient, yeah. Very resilient. Mm. You just keep going. And the only thing I do think, and I was upset with myself this week, I felt like I'm almost too numb. Mm-hmm. So when really serious things happen, you you cannot, you're too numb. So mm. you actually can be slow to react. Mm. Fight, flight or fright. Yeah. So I'm just so used to chaos and 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 trauma. I actually don't react mm. on time. So that means the issue can actually still escalate further before mm. I'm like, oh my God, no, this is actually this is serious. serious. Yeah. True. You so know, I'm why, like you know why it's serious, true. And, yeah. and, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll confess to you. So I was in the car mm-hmm. with obviously someone that you know. Yeah. A good friend of ours. Yeah. And obviously he's got, he's he's helping you through the situation, mm-hmm. right? And he said to me that that situation that you go through is serious, hmm. but he didn't want to bring the alarm and let you know it's serious because you will freak out, hmm. right? So and when I realized it as well, it's like yeah, that is a serious situation. It's really it's life or death actually. Mm. It for me it was it's actually life or death. Yeah. So so it's crazy. So yeah, it, it's um, and that's and these are the things that that, that build us because it's like now you know. What not to get into next time? I'm telling you. Like, even me, I, I like. I just know. Okay, first thing first. Like, there's a couple of things to check. You know, so, so first, in Nigeria, right? You get the basic stuff. When finding a place to live, mm-hmm. let's just discuss that because most of our issues right now is because of, as a result of the place that we found to live. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because if I didn't find a place that was a little bit far away, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have to kind of get into. Mm-hmm. Issues with the road and messing up on my cars and X Y Z, right? Which which should save me and that mechanic cost. Mm-hmm. Same with you, uh, closer to the, oh, the sure. riverside, yeah. um, facing the other issues that you that you have there. Mm-hmm. So there's so many checks to find a place to live. I'm telling you, right? That you end up checking, let's say fifty percent, but you didn't even know about the other fifty percent, and then you're like, ah, oh, so this is now. Oh, okay, oh, where where does it stop, right? So there actually needs to be a guide of how to oh, find a place. That's exactly in, in what Lagos. I'm working on, guys. Literally, yeah. early next year, we're putting together a guide. A guide on how to find a place to live in Lagos. Because it's really serious. It, 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 and honestly, you it, know, it's a lot to think it's about. It's, it's, it's serious because it affects your health. It can get. It can become a health yeah, issue no, if it, you get it wrong. It affects you actually. Yeah. Your experience in Lagos. Yeah. It affects your experience in Lagos a lot. That is very important. Uh, I I didn't even think it was as important as it was uh, until. I've gone through two situations. The first one was bad. It was very bad. Wow. The second one was just, just okay. It's just, okay. It's maybe just a car that's messing up. Yeah. And I'll just throw money at, at that and, and fix that. But mm-hmm. when it comes to my living condition, my happiness, I'm a little bit more happier. Yes, right? now, yeah. But I would definitely say like, Finding a place, a good place, has a lot of tick boxes that you need to check. You need a checklist. You, need you a should checklist. not blind blind and take things. And if it doesn't fit into that checklist, don't take it. I'm telling you. Because you're going to have a very bad experience. I'm telling you. It, it, it is. It's 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 crazy. Mm. It, it, it really is. It's, it's People here, and that's my issue with Nigerians, yeah. They're almost like me. Because of, I'm like this as a person, mm. numb. But what, if I look at Nigerians, they almost like me in a way mm. because they, they in our group chat now, we have a residence group chat, okay? Mm. Because the facility managers are just messing around. Messing up, yeah. And I I'm, I want to name drop and I probably will soon, but maybe not today. <laughs> okay, so what's happening is the facility management are now bullying the residents. And most of them are homeowners. Most of the mm. people on my street have bought their houses. So, wow. and they're going through the so brown they, water. So they can't leave. Yeah, they bought, they've literally walked out for hundreds of naira to buy the house. So imagine, yeah, they're now um, getting bullied, getting stories. Then they now want to go and 
pass on the stress mm. to the rest of the other tenants. Mm -hmm. So what's happened now is they said the gen coil this week, the drama this week now, they said the gen coil spoilt. Everybody should contribute 50,000 naira to renting a gen. Brother, we're new. The new those of us that just move, haven't even moved all our stuff in are like, what do you mean? We when we live here, then they started selling people to come and disconnect the meter. Then people started threatening each other on the group chat. It just became a market square. So it's like the 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 things like the the factors that you come into play. It's just so many, mm -hmm. and that checklist that you just mentioned right now, we are literally working on it. Mm. And by God's grace, early next year we're going to distribute that mm. because. There's so many things to look at. So even many when, things to look at. Even when you live somewhere small, when you live in a smaller compound, mm. your gate man is the one turning on and off the gen. Mm -hmm. That alone is like an issue it's because issue, yeah. you're calling him, turn on the gen. At night time, if this. you might sleep and not turn on the gen when the light goes off or stuff like that. Yeah. Man. <clears throat> Accommodation, finding a place to live is it's, it's a problem. Um... I'm still yet to find that formula. Please, you need to get this checklist done ASAP. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. I, I'm trying to move again. Yeah. And I, I want to make sure this time around, I don't want any problems. It's, even internet, for example, where I live right now, there's land dispute. Mm. The royal, there's royal land. There's even a lawsuit going on. These are things, again, that need to be checked. There's lawsuit on our land. That's affected us having fiber. Uh, fiber. No uh, it's affected even the gate that we can enter into. It's affected so many things <laughs> because of royal lawsuits. Because we literally live on you know on, the, yeah. on royal land. So it's so yeah. It, it's um it's a lot. It's it's unfortunate. But the way I am is every time I have trials, I just say is God teaching me mm. so I can help somebody else. That's how I go through it. Uh, uh, but at the same time, it's very good to have people around you. I've spoken to my brother this week. He put a lot of, he put a lot of logic into me and mm. sent it to me to tell me how serious what I was going through was and, and the things to do. I spoke to my best friend in London this week as well. She also really told me, you know, how to move forward because Nigeria can just numb you. Mm. It can just numb you. And what you do is you end up partying. Like I say, all the people do here is baby mm. make and party their problems away. Oh, no, but yeah, I don't yeah. think it's a good idea. I think you, you need to you fight. Face it head you on need head to on, fight. Yeah. yeah. Me, fight personally, I'm this week, I'm just waiting to sort out this issue. That facility company, they're going to see my face. They're going to see my face and they're going to get a lot of energy from me. And I'm going to rally up some of the young ones that have mm. energy that I've seen on the group chat. I'm going to, otherwise, we should take over the facilities. Do you know how much how much it affects your productivity? I work from home. Imagine working from home, light gone eight hours, water gone eight hours. Mm. Like, so what's the point then? Mm. So yeah, I, I mean, it's a lesson learned, and this is the beauty of what we're doing. So you guys don't have to go through go through this stuff, man. Uh, it's, what it's a through. painful. It's really process. sad. Yeah, it's really yeah, sad. The, the the one that freaked me out the most was my first day when I moved in and just saw the color of the water. Every day I send a picture of the color water to everyone that was responsible for me coming to Nigeria. I was like, this is what I'm going through right now. Like, does this even make sense? I'm telling you. I said it to the group people, I said it to my friends, I said it to my colleagues, I said, everybody, this is what I'm going <laughs> I'm through. I'm telling right now. you. And everybody just acted like it's normal. They say it's normal. It's normal. Everyone I speak about water. There's no good, water, there's no, there's no good water on the island. There's no good That's water. That's what they on the say. Island. It's like, what the fuck? What the, do you mean there's no good? They fix it. The water looked like palm oil. The water looked no, like it's palm like, oil. It's like, I don't understand why <sighs> when you tell someone that problem, they just act like it's normal. Nothing. Why the is the dirty water going through the tap normal? You see bottled water on everybody's sink. You have to brush your teeth with bottled water. In fact, to be honest, showering, my, some of my neighbours shower with dispenser water. Yeah. They use dispenser, that seaway bottled water oh, to, to that's, bath. That's what somebody told me. Somebody told me I should get... um. In the bathroom, yeah, you get a big tank and put and they, they, put they, the dispenser they, water. No, there's people that come and come and deliver water to your house. Hmm. Right now, anyways, what I'm trying to do this is why what I'm trying to do next. My water filter. What I'll do is I'll probably just go and get one reverse osmosis system inside mm. my house. It will cost me a bit. I've, I've had different prices: 400k, 600k, up into millions. Now, also with electricity, I have to look for an inverter. What I've been told about the inverter is I was going to go and buy an inverter, start with two batteries, go up to four mm. batteries. I've been told don't do that because where the way inverters work apparently is if the one of the batteries is poor performing, it drags all the other ones down. Mm. These are all knowledge that you just keep learning like mm. on the go. So I'm just, every time you have issues, you just have to, like you say, find solutions. Uh, and, and, and by God's grace, more young people try and bring innovative solutions to mm. solve your working in the solar space. Other yeah. people need to work on how can we have affordable, clean water? And also, yeah, no, I, I mean, look, to me, I, I should have actually solved that solution, but I mean, there's so many, so, there's so many solutions, uh, problems. There's only That's few why hands. we're here. Yeah. yeah there's only a few hands. So 
please, does anybody have a water solution? Please, Come please, a jaw. That one, I'm even, I'm even big. When I saw, that was the first time in my life I saw a brown My body just started itching me just from the sight of it. I, I literally was like, hell to the no. Am I going to be going to a hotel to, to, to go and be showering? So yeah, this, this country, uh, I don't regret moving back at all. The, today, this was just to actually just even update our mm. listeners on what day to day life is like because we talk about the beauty of of Africa and mm. Nigeria because it genuinely is. There's so many good things coming. Like I went to go and visit like a water park, one of the biggest water parks wow. is, is coming right now in Shongote. Though it's it's fun. It's gonna be amazing Mm. there's so many good developments coming up and there's so many developers as well that actually are doing things right Mm. but so we just need to look for them and 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 also never doing make any decision by yourself yeah uh you you know just thinking even like properties or or people who we know have properties that fit the checklist yes the concierge is that's what it's there for concierge service service, and then um, Mm -hmm. we can get through to you to, to sort that out because that is a that is a is a problem. Uh, sorry, it's been making me feel. Normally, I'm very excited and and this thing, but just thinking about the Everything. trauma I've been through it's right no, now. Trauma is bad. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's quite. It's just made me very reserved right now. Boy, on that yeah. note, yeah. On that note, see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>